Not all 200 watt solar panels are created equal. In this video, we're comparing three Renogy 200 watt solar panels. The standard Perk, the advanced Topcon N-Type, and the innovative Shadow Flux anti-shading model. Each is rated at 200 watts, but how they generate and sustain that output, especially in real world conditions, vary significantly. Let's break them down by core specs, cell technology, performance under shade, system compatibility, and some ideal use cases. First panel is a 12 volt panel. Effectively, it can be stepped down to 12 volts for a 12 volt battery. This next panel is an anti-shade panel. So this panel, when a small bit is covered, it still operates at very high efficiency. And this last panel is your standard 200 watt panel. This is about 33 volts or so open circuit, and so is this one. This one is in the, I think, 19 volts open circuit. They all come with MC4 connectors, aluminum frames, so they're all rigid panels. So these can be mounted on vehicles, houses, cabins, or on the ground. First, let's define three key terms. So VOC, VMP, and IMP. VOC is your open circuit voltage, the voltage that a panel produces with no load connected. The VMP is the voltage at the maximum point, where the panel is operating most efficiently. IMP is the current at maximum power, the amps delivered at that peak. Together, the volts times the amps is your real world power. So the VMP times the IMP is your real world power. If you're wiring panels in series, add the VOC values to ensure that you stay within your charge controller's limit. For maximum efficiency, especially with MPPT controllers, you'll want to operate close to VMP. Okay, this is the first panel we're gonna look at. This is the RSP200D. So this panel is about 27 and a half inches by about 58 and three quarters. This is a 12 volt panel, even though it has an operating voltage of about 19.2. And that means its current is about 10.42 at kind of ideal conditions. So this guy is about uh, 26 and a half pounds, uh, 12 kilograms. And this needs a 20 amp fuse. So it's got a nice strong aluminum frame. And being narrower, it's ideal for a rooftop. You know, you could have a couple in line and then a couple kind of next to each other. Okay, so this kind of panel does not offer any shade protection. The next panel we're gonna look at is a little different because it does offer shade protection. This is the Shadow Flux. And this panel is pretty nice because it's, it's all black. It's got a black frame, very nice. And this panel is a little bit wider at about 30 inches, about just under 50 inches and about 1300 millimeters, give or take, a little less than that. So this is a tiny bit lighter than the other one. So this panel is, you know, nice looking too. It's all black like this. So it kind of goes into the environment nicely. Now this one is special because if you cover up a little bit like with a leaf or some kind of shade from a tree or something like that, this still performs, whereas most other panels kind of, they really die off quite, quite a lot. This panel is also special because this one has a higher voltage than the other one. So this is 31.3 uh, operating voltage. Now these things can spike up to 36.5 because that's the open circuit voltage. This one goes a slightly lower current because it's got a slightly higher voltage. This one also needs a 15 amp fuse, and this can be wired up in arrays as large as 1,000 volts. The other two guys can go at 600 volts. This third panel is virtually the same dimensions and the same weight. So this panel is very similar in its kind of look to the first panel. This operates at a higher voltage like the Shadow Flux panel. This is at 31 volts and has an open circuit of up to 37. So you have to be considering your solar charge controller setup with this kind of panel setup. So if you run these and string these together, 
uh, in two or three series, you're gonna shoot way over 100 volts. So this one needs a 20 amp fuse as well. Both this and the Shadow Flux, because they operate at higher voltages, they can deal for larger battery sizes than 12 volt, because these are running at higher voltages. Especially if you're gonna run these in series, if you're gonna do like for 48 volt batteries, you might have two of these in series to jump up the voltage way over 60 volts, because you're gonna be stepping it down with your solar charge controller down to 48 volts. So you wanna basically have more coming in than going out. So this is a 15 amp fuse, although this does require a 20 amp fuse. The first is Perk monocrystalline. It uses standard monocrystalline silicon with a reflective rear layer. It's a mature technology, it's cost effective and widely compatible. It's not as high as efficiency as some of the others. Then we have the Topcon N-Type. It's got the N-Type silicon and resists light induced degradation. The third panel we have, which is the newest, is the Shadow Flux anti-shading panel. It also uses an N-Type Topcon cell, but it has a revised bus bar layout. It mitigates the domino effect from partial shading. It's designed for mobile use or rooftops with obstacles like chimneys or vents. Okay, in this chart you can see how basically these compare. Their weight, their size, things like that. The voltage they take in, how many amps they put out, that kind of thing. The PERC panel runs at a lower voltage and higher current, optimized for 12 volt systems. Both the Topcon and the Shadow Flux operate at about 30 something volts, which is ideal for MPPT controllers and higher voltage strings. Weight and size favor the newer panels, which are more compact without sacrificing output. In hot climates, the Topcon and Shadow Flux designs suffer less loss per degree rise in temperature. That's an important thing to note if you're dealing with a very sunny, hot environment. Where the shadow flux really stands out is in partial shade. Most solar panels drop sharply in output if just a small part of the one cell is shaded. Shadow flux panels reroute current more intelligently. Instead of dragging down the whole panel, the affected zone is bypassed, keeping the rest of the panel generating. In environments with tree shadows, power poles, roof clutter, the shadow flux can yield significantly better real-world energy over time, even if all three panels have identical specs. In this setup, which is just a test setup, I basically have the battery connected to the inverter as well as the solar charge controller. I have a breaker here just to make sure that the amps don't go too high for safety. Different solar charge controllers operate differently. In this case, this is an MPPT. So this is a higher quality solar charge controller capable of dealing with up to 100 volts. And that takes it down to 12 volts for this battery. So up to 100 volts can come in and it takes it, steps it down to 12 volts. So all you need for a basic setup to, for any kind of system, is a battery, an inverter, and a solar charge controller if you're gonna operate by solar. Here's what you need to consider when choosing a panel. The system voltage. The perks works best with 12 or 24 volt systems. The Topcon and Shadow Flux can run in strings at higher voltage. Then you have your charge controller type. If you're using a PWM, the lower perk panel may be a better match. For MPPT higher voltage panels, that's more efficient to have the Topcon or the Shadow Flux, and they allow longer wire runs. Shading risk. If shading is likely, Shadow Flux will maintain more consistent output and reduce mismatch losses. Here's basically how you choose. If you expect some frequent shading, then the Shadow Flux is gonna be the best option. 
If you just need a basic 12 volt panel for a cabin or trailer, the perk panel will work best. The shadow flux is going to be the most efficient. And if you're planning a large rooftop array, the top con's gonna probably work the best. If you're most budget conscious, the perk panel is gonna work well too. It looks like it came to life. 34.6 volts from the shadow flux panel. Now we, we don't have it completely connected to the battery yet, and we're gonna do that now. I did some real world testing with these panels. I compared them side by side so that they would be able to see the same exact level of light. For this little test setup, we're gonna use a 3000 watt inverter and a 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery and a solar charge controller capable of dealing with 12 or 24 volt batteries. That's really all you need for a mobile or off-grid system. For permanent setups, you'd also want breakers and monitoring, but that's another video. In full sun, all three panels performed within expectations, averaging about 175 watts. That's a great result. It's rare to hit a full 200 in real-world conditions due to temperature, sun angle, and other losses. To test shading performance, I covered a corner of each panel with cardboard. The shadow flux panel dropped from about 10 amps to eight amps, about a 20% loss. The top con panel dropped from six and a half to basically one, an 80% reduction. The perk panel behaves similarly to that top con. Once a string is partially shaded, most output is lost. The shadow flux's wiring design isolates the affected zone, keeping the rest of the panel working. But you can't expect miracles in this situation. If you shade half the panel, the output will drop significantly. The shadow flux helps when one branch or small vent shadow it hits the panel. It won't rescue output from complete shade. I've included all the links and the full specs for comparisons in the description. If you've used any of these panels, let me know in the comments. If you have any questions, put them there too. Thanks for watching. See you next video.